This is the fifth part in a series of videos on why religion sucks in Dungeons and Dragons and most role-playing games and even if you're not talking about role-playing games, most modern fiction. Part of the problem is in our current world, most people aren't very religious. It used to be in the West that most people would go to church on Sundays, but that just doesn't happen much anymore. A lot of people have just plain forgotten how to behave in a religious manner, but that's okay because today whether you are creating a religion or rather you want to make a character who is a religious based character we're going to go with four simple points that's all you need to make it much more interesting these four topics include prayer acts of service tithing and acts of devotion as long as you come up with one thing for each of these four categories the character is going to be a lot more fun to play and it's going to make the world seem a lot more alive. And hey, before we get into that, if you could click like, subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more D&D videos. We have comic book videos, TV and movie reviews, and live guests. Number one is prayer. All gods require some form of prayer. Prayer actually comes from an old word which means to serve. Back in the olden days, certainly in the Bronze Age and Stone Age, there was kind of a quid pro quo between you and your god. You prayed to your god through various means, and you do the other activities, and that god will reward you in some such way. God of the harvest, you'll have a good harvest. God of the hunt, you'll be able to get meat. God of hot women, well, you just might get lucky there too. But prayer is where things start. Most people think of simple prayer, such as getting on your knees, putting your hands together, and saying some special words. Some religions will have a set prayer. In Christianity, all sects of Christianity will say the Our Father. In Buddhism, they have scriptures that they will chant repeatedly. Some other religious sects go more freestyle. Certainly, Christian evangelicals and Protestants, they just bring up whatever's on their mind. Usually in a prayer, you are either asking a God for favors or you are thanking them for something that they have already done for you. They're not so interested in the weather report or how Mr. Snuffles really enjoys his naps. Gods are busy and they need to hear what is important to you and what you will do for them. Prayer doesn't always have to be getting on your knees and putting your hands together though. Sufi Muslims spin around in circles to get themselves into a meditative feeling in order to get closer to God. Songs are also a form of prayer. Hindu yogis will do yoga as a form of prayer. So there's no reason to keep it boring. Allow the players to think of something fun, something original. Other important factors about prayer are the frequency and the location. Sometimes you must pray in a certain place. For example, you have to go to church. The frequency used to be three times a day. There would be a morning mass, a noon mass, and an evening mass. Others may only require you to pray at certain times of the year. For example, pray in thanks for a good harvest or praying before you go on a hunt. I have a previous video about special occasions in each religion that you can add in at your will. Number two is acts of service. These are acts that further your God's message or your God's image within the world at large. An act of service would be feeding the poor, giving home to the homeless, educating people, even perhaps taking on a quest in their name. If you're ridding their local area of undead, that'll go a long way to furthering your God's goals. Now, what exactly are your God's goals? Well, that depends on the God. There are certain good gods which would want things that we would consider in the general good, but perhaps you have God of alcohol. That God may want you to brew sacred alcohol and give it to people. You could have a God of death who wants you to clear out the undead because they have not come to his realm. The acts of service that your God requires should be varied and the frequency with which your God wants it can also vary. This could be a yearly thing where once a year you have to help some poor soul or it could be an always thing. You must always donate money to the poor. You must always give up extra rations to feed people. The third main feature is some kind of tithing. Now a tithing in both Christian and Jewish religions is where you pay 10% of your income to God. 
Now, what that income is could be different things. It could be straight up cash money. For example, every time your party gets a quest reward, the religious players must put 10% of at least their share into their religion. It could also be physical items. If you have a brewer and they're making alcohol, they're making fine wines, you must donate 10% of that to the religious order. Tithing doesn't necessarily have to be 10%. That's just traditional for a lot of places. It's up to you, the DM or the player, to decide just how much you're going to do and when. The idea of a tithe can also cover various religious periods. Every religion will have their high holy days. And do you have to tithe money to those? Do you Are you responsible for funding a certain organization, an orphanage, your local temple? This will have two effects. One is it generally tends to help the organization and have positive feelings towards your player, if not your party. And it also relieves... And it also makes the world feel more real and lived in where your player has certain responsibilities to his religion. Number four is acts of devotion. Now, some people might say, well, what's the difference between an act of devotion and an act of service? An act of service is something that the player does that helps the overall community, the physical infrastructure, the organization and its members, whereas an act of devotion is something that the player will do for his God specifically. An act of devotion could be you're going on a religious crusade, you're going on a pilgrimage. It could be that you are donating more money than a standard tithe would require. And it could even involve joining the clergy itself. Acts of devotion are often very personal and they are inspired by the god directly either in the form of a dream or perhaps even the god directly telling the character exactly what he wants and it might also involve emulating a previous religious hero or icon some very simple acts of devotion could be getting a tattoo branding yourself ugh, circumcision or other body mutilation, could even be self-flagellation, whipping yourself going from town to town. Vows of poverty and vows to slay the enemies of your God, or even to go out and prophesize his or her message. These are all acts of devotion. When you design either your religion or your religious character, if you just do one thing in each of these four categories, the religious component of your story and adventure will be much higher, much more enjoyable to everyone, and you'll certainly get an attaboy from the DM. So what's your method of creating more realistic and, and a religion with more depth? Leave your comment down below. And hey, if you're looking for a game that has all of these functions, guess what? Empire of the Undying Sun is for you. Empire of the Undying Sun is my campaign guide, which is compatible with 5th edition, both 2014 and 2024, the first one available for 2024. And it's launching on Kickstarter on September 27th of 2024. There's a link down in the description below. If you go to www.empireoftheundyingsun.com and you register an account, before the game launches, you will get one free module written by one Mr. Bill Sylvie, a.k.a. the Dungeon Delver, the man who used to write modules for Gary Gygax himself. So follow us on Kickstarter, sign up on the website, and we'll see you guys soon for more videos.